welcome to video six of our Raspberry Pi uh, robot project. So in this video, we're going to um, connect up the final component to our robot, which is the pan tilt uh, with two servos on it to uh, mount our Raspberry Pi camera and the Bright Pi LED module to it. So two things we're going to I'm going to cover with you here. Uh, first one is we're going to be using uh, another project. Um, called um, Servo Blaster. Uh, if you want to find out more information, you can go to the github.com Richard uh, G. Hurst Pybits um, and you'll find uh, his Servo Blaster project. I took a look at several projects that were used to co control um, servo motors, including trying to develop my own um, just through um, a high level programming language. But I found that um, really these low-level program languages are just much more uh, accurate and precise in controlling the servo motors. And, uh, Richard developed this in C, a very low-level language again, and uh, I found it to be a very, very good project and well used uh, out on um, many projects um, that you'll find. So uh, the tilt pen device that I'm using uh, is this one off of uh, this is robotshop.com. This is a very inexpensive device, as you can see over here. Um, what I liked about it, one, it was cheap, but uh, two, it also only required five volts, which um, was great because I could run it directly off the power uh, of the Raspberry Pi. Um, as I mentioned before, um, the sort of the hinges uh, where the, the two mechanisms sort of move around, I found they just binded a lot and uh, didn't really work so well. So what I ended up doing was modifying this device, uh, which I'll go through here in a minute with you when I switch over to my um, external video. Before I do that though, I just want to show you, go back to our GPIO TIFF diagram and just show the last few connections that we're going to make to our Raspberry Pi. So you'll remember we had the 5 volt um, splitter cable. Uh, one of them we connected up to our bright Pi, while the other two are going to go to the red connection on our uh, uh, pilt, uh, tilt uh, and pan module to power the two servo motors. Um, and then we of course have uh, the two ground cables we're going to connect together and connect up to uh, pin 34, which is a ground pin on the uh, Raspberry Pi. And then we need two GPIO pins to control each of the uh, servo motors. So the tilt servo, uh, for me, it's going to go to GPIO 18 or pin 12. And then the pan servo uh, is going to go to pin 16 or GPIO 23. So we're, I'm going to switch over now um, and show you the uh, uh, pan tilt module. And we'll go through the actual connecting up of this device. Okay, welcome back. So here is my pan tilt mechanism that I mentioned. So as you can tell, um, I've modified it from the um, picture that I showed you on the web. So the first thing I did on the bottom bracket, you see I've removed both sides of, of the uh, metal um, uh, connector. And this is where they would come up and they would hinge with the uh, um, uh, top one. So I removed both sides. I just used a hacksaw to remove that. Then the um, the actual tilt um, servo, uh, which is the top one, um, has a little bracket that it came with. So I just basically bolted that to this bottom metal platform where I cut the sides off of. Um, and then on the top bracket, I cut one side off um, so that it wasn't really kind of high, um, uh, hanging down on its own, catching on things. So. For me, this worked very well, um, mostly because um, the Pi camera and bright Pi that I'm mounting to it is very lightweight, so I don't need a lot of strength um, to this. Um, and it is, you know, it is still pretty, pretty strong. Although if you had a heavy camera that you were mounting to it, um, you it might not work so well. So uh, that's that's what I've done uh, to this. So. I'm going to pause the video here in a minute and do a couple things um, uh, off video. First one I'm going to do is I'm going to actually mount the um, uh, pan tilt to my plexiglass um, uh, frame here. 
So as I mentioned before, I've cut out um, a little uh, rectangle connection and two holes for, for two screws to do go through. So what I do is I actually sit the bottom servo um, onto the plexiglass and then I'm going to put two small plastic bolts through that and that's how I connect it up to the uh, plexiglass. The other thing I'm going to do off video is that um, remember the two red wires that we had for our 5 volt power. I'm going to solder and then use the heat shrink tube to connect up those two red wires to the two red wires on the coming from the, the two servos. And then the final thing I'm going to do uh, before I come back is I'm just going to mount the um, Raspberry Pi camera and Bright Pi to my um, um, top bracket here. Again, using the two plastic bolt bolts that I mentioned in a previous one, I'm just going to put it on top and then use two nuts on the other side to connect them up. Um, so I'll come, I'll do all this off video and then I'll come back and go through uh, what I did with you uh, one more time uh, before we go through the remaining connections, which we still have um, three connections to connect up to the Raspberry Pi. We of course have our ground and two GPIO pins to control the servos. So back in a sec. Okay, welcome back. So I've gone ahead and done the uh, three things that I mentioned. I now have my uh, pan tilt um, uh, mounted to the plexiglass on the bottom, which you can see here with two bolts. I've connected the Raspberry Pi camera and Bright Pi to the top bracket with again with two bolts. And then I've soldered the um, Y connected connection that we had for the five volt battery. So you can see the bottom um, a red cable coming from the servo is soldered in and then the red cable from the top servo is also solid, soldered in. So that leaves three connections we need to make now to the Raspberry Pi. First one uh, is going to pin 34 and that will be our brown cable and again I've soldered, uh, previously soldered the two ground cables con connections together so that they come to one ground connection going into the bright uh, or into the Raspberry Pi uh, pins. So this goes on to pin 34, which is basically the fourth pin um, from the bottom here. So we can just count them up. So one, two, three, four. Okay, that'll be our ground. And then we've got our two GBI, GPIO pins coming from each of our servo motors, and that's the orange cable in, from my servo. Your servo could um, have different colors on this, so you'll have to read the documentation for them. So the pen, which is the servo um, at the bottom that moves back and forth, to, or side to side, I should say, is the pen servo. So you want to make sure you're grabbing the right cable for it, which is the bottom one for me, which is the blue one. The blue one goes on to um, pin 16, which is right next to the um, Bright Pi blue ground cable that I had installed earlier, so I don't really need to count. I just know it, it goes right next to it because um, that one is on pin 14, so 16 would be right next to it. Just connecting that in there. Okay, and then we've got a the GPIO pin connection for the top servo, which for me is the orange cable, and that goes to pin 12, which again is just on the other side of that original ground cable that I put in, so I don't really need to count for that. And there we go, we've got everything connected up. So. Now we're going to switch back to our computer, power up our Pi, and do some configuration. Okay, I've gone ahead and powered up my Raspberry Pi, and I've got an SSH window open here. And so the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is using the git command is make a clone of the um, Servo Blaster uh, project. So to do that, we use git clone https colon forward slash forward slash git hub.com forward slash Richard uh, G Hurst with an I forward slash pi bits so capital P I capital B bits 
So this is going to make a clone of his uh, project. He's got several projects within this Pi bit, but we're uh, we're interested in um, just one of them here for this project. So if we do um, ls, you'll see that we've got now got a Pi bits folder. Okay, so we're going to change into the uh, change directory into the Pi bits directory. So we do cd capital P I bits. We'll do a directory in there and you see that there's several projects that Richard includes in this. We want to go into the servo blaster, so uh, cd servo blaster and do a list there. Um, and you'll see again we've got several directories. We want to be in the user directory, so cd user. Okay, so if we look in here we've got several um, C files and we're going to uh, compile these. So the first thing we need to do is sudo using the make command again that we installed uh, a couple of videos ago, serve od. And this is going to um, go through a, a, a process to compile these and, and then install them. So we've gone ahead, we've done the compile, which is great. Now we need to uh, use the make command again and do an install of it. Pretty quick, um, and so the question is, now is it working? So we're going to try this out by typing in this command. So again, dot forward slash serve od. Okay, so we've kind of loaded it, and uh, and and it's up and running. So a couple things here to point out. The first one is um, by default um, when you load. The servo blaster program it um, is loading it up for eight servos and eight servos on these GPI uh, GPIOs or these um, uh, pins uh, P1 P and so on that he's using. So um, first thing to kind of take a note of here is if we look at our uh, our diagram here, uh, I'll put these side by side. We are using ours um, on GPIO 18 and 23 that we uh, just connected up. So 18 and 23. So notice that there's a whole bunch of others here and that some of these actually are going to conflict with uh, some of the things we're, we're using. So as an example, GPIO 17 here, which is pin 11, GPIO 8 is using our motor controller. So we've, we're actually going to end up with a conflict. So we're going to need to resolve that and, and really tell Servo Blaster to only use the G, two GPIO pins that we're, uh, we're using. But for now, uh, we're just going to test this out and make sure it actually is, is working. Um, so to do that, we use uh, a command, um, EC echo uh, P1 dash 12, which uh, remember in the diagram up here, P1 dash 12 is using GPIO team. So this should move the servo that we have attached to that. So, and then we're going to say equal 120, which is uh, changing it to 120 degrees. And then we need the arrow and dev slash servo blaster. And it should move our servo. And as you can see on the picture in picture, it actually moves the tilt servo uh, up, which is great. So we're kind of we're kind of working here. So let's um, just try that again and bring it back to 90 and see what happens. And again it moved it to uh, uh, pointing it straight forward. Um, so that's great. Our tilt so servo is is working. So let's um, let's actually try this now on the pan servo. So we're going to use a different. So it's not uh, the 12 that we have. It's actually going to be the GPIO 23, which is on 16. So we do 16, and we're going to change this to 70, and just see what that does. As you can see, it moved it. That's great. We're going to move that back to 100 and see what that does. So great, our servo, um, our, our pan servo is actually, is also working, which is fantastic. 
Um, so the next thing we need to do is to make sure that we're only loading it um, on the, the two GBIO pins that we need. So to do that, we're going to modify a file and on boot up, we're going to tell it to only use those pins. We're going to use the sudo command. We're going to nano um, etc slash init dash d and the servo blaster. Okay, so in this file, we need to make one change in here, which this file will automatically be loaded on boot up. And so we need to change the command that's doing the start, which is uh, very similar to what we use to start it up and do our test there. The only thing is we're going to add a couple com um, uh, options to this. So we're going to add in dash dash p1 pins. Pins equal 12 comma 16 space. We're going to save this, control X. We're going to say yes. And then we're going to do a reboot here. So I'm going to pause the video while we do our reboot. Okay, so we've got our uh, Raspberry Pi booted up again. So now we're going to go back to our um, uh, web browser and actually do a refresh here and as you can see our video is working we've hopefully got our motors working which we do check them all out perfect so now we're going to test out this bottom part here so what i've got here is some preset um, uh, pan tilt positions that i wanted for the uh, robot so you could do this in different ways you could have a sliding bar to move each one of the the servos I decided to go with just presets um, because this is good enough for what I wanted. So let's try this out. So let's move it left. Oh, it works. Great. Move it right. Again, that's working perfect. 85 for me is straightforward. That's a normal position I want the camera in. I can, if I want to look, say, at the ceiling and look at that, you can see my ceiling. And if I want to say, look at the ground and there you go. So it's all working, which is great. I want to show you um, how you would go Go about modifying this. So um, in our CGI bin directory, which is in uh, slash var slash www dash CGI dash bin, the list here, you'll see that we've got the rest of our CGI scripts here. So you'll notice that for each one of these tilts, uh, say 50, um, I've actually got a separate CGI script that we're using for that. So let's just take a look, uh, by example, the 50.cgi. So this is using a command very similar to what we originally tested with. So it's doing a, an echo, zero equal 50, 50 degrees, and then greater than dev slash servo blaster. So if you wanted to change this to a different angle for you, you could just simply go into this uh, 50.cgi bin and actually change it to whatever, you know, the angle that you wanted. You might be good to also change the file name, which is you're going to have to change one other thing, which we're going to go through in the final video um, for this series. Um, so really that brings us to an end for this video six. Um, in video seven, it's going to be the final video. What we're going to go through in video seven is um, you remember the uh, two um, HTML uh, files that we have that we're using uh, for whether you're using mouse or touch. I'm going to go through those in a lot more detail to show you what's going on because really those two files are what brings everything um, together. So I'm going to show you that. I'm also going to show you some uh, links to uh, uh, programming tutorials that help me get up to speed enough to actually create those two files. The other thing I'm going to take you um, through is a couple more configuration options to fine tune our project that I've used. And then um, I'm also going to talk a little bit about how I'm accessing this from the internet. Uh, right now it works great when we're on our home network but uh, you might be questioning how I'm accessing it from the, uh, the internet. So we're gonna go through that. 
And I'm also in between now and then, I'm going to do some cable management to get it all cleaned up and properly mounted um, onto our robot. So we're gonna do a final, final review and demo of our final project here. So stay tuned for video seven.